Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Good morning. I am Rabbi Jenny Greenspan for Congregation Beth El Zedek. Apologize for a couple minutes delay getting on live this morning for our Torah talk. For whatever reason, my computer was not cooperating. So we're going to try it from my uh, from a different device from my phone here. So we're hope I'm hoping this one works. And uh, again, I apologize for a couple minutes delay. Um, but I am Rabbi Jenny Greenspan, and I'm here Beth El for Congregation Beth El Zedek in Indianapolis to do a little bit of Torah talk on our very first parsha of the year of 5781. We're on a parashat Breshit, the first parasha of the first book. So we are right at the very beginning of Genesis each year always starting over uh, as usual if you need a copy of the PDF of the Etz Chaim Chumash you can find it on our website just go to bez613.org and go over to our virtual Shabbat resources and select the Torah Talk resources where you will get a copy of the PDF for from the Etz Chaim of this week's parasha of Parashat Bereshit if you have an Etz Chaim Chumash at home, then you can just go straight to page three, where the right at the very beginning. Um, or if you are using any other form of Chumash, you can just go to Genesis chapter one, verse one. You start at the very beginning. Um, and we'll say Shabbat Shalom and good morning to at least some of the comments that I am seeing. I see Shabbat Shalom. Good morning to Alan Hamburger and to Phyllis Luger and to Miles Siegel. Shabbat Shalom. Good morning to all of you. And uh, we will get started in just a moment. And uh, there is a lot to digest in this parasha. Some of you were uh, at Torah Talk with me when we were in person a year ago when we began at the beginning of Bereshit and decided to just stick with it. And I don't think we ever got past uh, the third parsha of the book of Genesis because there is just so much in this particular portion and in the next portions and really in all of Torah. Um, so I'm thinking fondly of those times a year ago, and uh, we'll look at a bigger overview of this week's portion in just a moment. Okay. All right, so this week's Torah portion, Bereshit, was often translated as in the beginning or at the beginning. Uh, I appreciate the JPS translation of when God began to create and I want us to take a moment today to look at what is the process of creation, not the particulars of the story, but the actual how. What are God's tools for creating? So we will go through this. As we go through this portion, I want us to look for two key words. One is said. God said or God spoke any of those um, because God, unlike human beings, seems to be able to create just by words alone. But the other thing I want us to be looking for is if you glance in the Hebrew and you don't need to be able to read the Hebrew or understand the Hebrew particularly uh, particularly well, but I want you to look for this root, for this shoresh in the Hebrew. Anytime you see a bet or vet, followed by a dalid, followed by a lamed. These three word, these three letters in this order within a word means to separate or to uh, draw apart from one another. You're probably familiar with it from the word Havdalah. So Havdalah is our moment of separation at the end of Shabbat and going back into the rest of the week and is actually meant to be a mini restart to creation. So I'll come back to Havdalah at the end of this, um, but I want us to look for that word. You can also look in the English for any kind of separating, dividing, but pulling apart. So let's go through it. I'm going to go through a somewhat overview quickly of the first chapter and the first few words of the second chapter of creation. So when God began to create heaven and earth, the earth being unformed and void with darkness over the surface of the deep and wind from God sweeping over the water, God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light, separated the light from the darkness, and called the light day, and the darkness God called night. There was evening and there was morning, a first day. God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the water, that it may separate water from water. And that one is no will note is water from the uh, oceans, from the waters of the sky. In the ancient world, they believed that there was a, a firmament, a dome that separated water above 
from the land. And actually when we have rain, they believed it was, uh, there were small openings that would come through. So we had so far of at least two separations. God made the expanse and separated the water, which was from below uh, the expanse from the water, which was above the expanse. And it was so God called the expanse sky. There was evening and morning, a second day. God said, let the water below the sky be gathered into one area and the dry land will appear. So we don't necessarily have the word separating, but we have the water gathering and separating out from the dry land. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and gathered the waters and called seas. God saw that it was good. And this will continue as you re keep reading the rest of the creation story. And you'll see the words to separate or to gather, to divide. You'll see that theme happening over and over and over. And I think that this is a key for understanding how creation works. If we go back to verse two, the very second verse, often when it's skipped over, we often think of God created, let there be light. <laughs> we tend to forget what was the process that God really had to go through to begin creation. The earth was unformed and void with darkness over the surface of the deep and a wind from God sweeping over the water. Excuse me. We see God taking some kind of unformed chaos, a mishmash of all of the ability of what may be becoming creation, and God is hovering there and separates it all out. Now, God is able to do that with simply words and, and pulling. Um, we don't quite have that ability to simply say, though our power, our words have power and when it gets, sets us up to create. But it seems to be that a key part of creation is separating things into their like categories so that they can grow into what they will be. God separates the waters from one to, to another. God separates the light from the dark, the water from the land, allowing each thing to be its own so that it can grow. And often when we be, think about creating, we are used to thinking about the, the chaos. <laughs> if we picture an art studio, there's a certain amount of chaos there. And then there is a process of separating out the pieces that we need so that they can come back together in a new way and in a new form. So God actually creates by first separating pieces and then placing humans together. And that is the second step I see to creation. So let's move ahead into chapter six, or into, sorry, the sixth day, <laughs> still in chapter one. I'm going to scroll forward. I'll find the page in just a moment for you. I'm looking at the PDF as well. And the sixth day begins on page nine, where we see the beginning of mammal of most mammals and then god created on page 10 genesis chapter 1 verse 27 god created humans in god's image and in the image of god god created them male and female god created them so first we have the separation of different types of animals including human beings from one another and then if we move to chapter 2 verse 5 which we will see on page 13 there was no shrub in the field as yet on earth and no grass in the field yet sprouted because God had not sent rain upon the earth and there was no person to till the soil but a flow would well up from the ground and water the whole surface of the earth and God formed the person from the dust of the earth and God blew into the person's nostrils the breath of life or nishmat chayim, nishmat chayim and the person became a living being. So here, creation, rather than separating out pieces in the second chapter of creation, is putting spirit into life. And I think that that is our task as humans, made in the image of God and with the spirit of God. We both have to separate pieces into their right spaces and allow each thing to grow on its own, allow each human being to grow to be who he or she or they are meant to be. And... We have to remember to bring it together and to infuse the spirit of God into one. There's a midrash that states that the us being made in the image of God is a sign that we have intellect like God. But us having the nishmat chayim means we also have the emotional and the spiritual elements of God that we bring both together. The process of creation is both separation and combination. 
I read an article or I, I read something earlier this week describing a history teacher's le uh, lesson plan for teaching about the Salem witch trials in which the students were told each individually and secretly whether or not they were a normal person or a witch. And the students then had to, as a group, come uh, make their groups and have no group with a witch in it. And the students immediately started separating in the wrong ways, immediately started drawing lines and dividing without seeing the spirit of God within one another. And to the point that they actually made multiple groups. And at the end of the class, the teacher asked anyone who had been assigned a witch to raise his or her hand. And no one did because none were. So often our mistakes as human beings is drawing lines of separations between one another that need not be there. And so we, with the Spirit of God, need to both know when to separate in order to create and when to infuse pieces together of when to create so that we can each have our own uh, Selim Elohim, our own image of God, and our own, our own spirit of life from God. So I hope that we, this week, as we begin anew our Torah, we begin looking at creation and we see the world start to enter into the fall to kind of reset and create itself anew in the coming spring, that we remember both the process of separating so that each thing can become its own and grow and of the infusion so that we do not draw separations and lines where they need not be. I mentioned at the beginning that Habdallah, that separation, is um, is part of creation. In the Talmud, that's actually in the section about Pesach, uh, about Pesach uh, we talk about the word havdalah, separation, and they point out the rabbis of the of the Talmud point out that havdalah is a moment where we do creation over again. As it gets on Saturday night, we strike a flame, and we separate between the darkness of the night into a new creation of a new week, and we light it up again. As just as that verse three, God said, let there be light and we create light. And we create in order to separate our holy time of Shabbat and our regular mundane time of the rest of the week where we can go through the processes of creation. So I hope that this week we maybe have a moment of Havdalah this evening, thinking of a moment of recreating our world anew and that we each are allowed to uh, grow and be our own individuals and be the best that we are meant to be, uh, each as we are separated from one another, and that we've come together with the Nishmat Chayim, and we don't leave one another alone. That's another verse to look out for in this week's Torah portion. Thank you all for joining me. There's so much going on in this Torah portion. I hope that you will enjoy uh, joining our service later on at 10 o'clock, either on the live stream or on the Zoom to celebrate our Bar Mitzvah this morning. If you have either the, the, link, the Zoom link, either from the family or from our congregational email, you are welcome to join on the Zoom. So you'll probably have a better view watching from the live stream. Um, and our Bar Mitzvah will be pointing out what he finds as a charge in this week's Torah portion for taking care of this planet that was also created for us, or perhaps we were created for it. So I'd like you to tune in then at 10 o'clock with Rabbi Dennis, Cantor Melissa, and our Bar Mitzvah and his family. And I will see you soon. Shabbat Shalom. Let's say Shabbat Shalom. And thank you to Carol Steinfeld. Shabbat Shalom to my parents. Looks like they're watching. Shabbat Shalom, Maria and Cheryl Tuf. And Jim Roth, so good to see everybody this week. I apologize if not all of the comments came through and I missed anyone, but I hope that you all have a wonderful week and a beautiful and creative time going forward. And Shabbat Shalom, Jericho, you slipped in there right there. Shabbat Shalom. We'll see you soon.